All right, let's uh, jog over to Austin now. The third special session of the legislature has now officially wrapped up. Several controversial bills were passed in this special session, including a transgender sports bill and the so-called heartbeat abortion bill that's making its way through the courts right now. But there is another move that was made by lawmakers. It was approved last night, in fact, that is now getting national attention. We're talking about redrawing the lines of political districts here in Texas, and this is going to affect a lot of Texas voters. And so we wanted to take some time today to discuss what this means for you. And we have brought in Scott Braddock, the editor of the Quorum Report, to talk more about this. Scott, you are the first person who pops to mind uh, when these things are happening down in Austin. So thank you for joining us today. Well, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. <laughs> it means good that we you, call Jason. you a lot when things are Absolutely. happening. Uh, so, so this is a biggie. Everybody expected that this mm -hmm. was going to be a big fight and that we probably would get a controversial map uh, at the end of this. Uh, and that is uh, sort of what turned out here. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the final draft that was passed here and who the winners are going to be and who the losers are going to be? I think the winners, it's pretty clear, are the incumbents. If you look at what the, and it's not a partisan comment, uh, you have Democrats and Republicans alike in the legislature, in Congress, uh, who are going to probably either be able to keep their seats or at least compete for the seats that they have, uh, and that's Democrats and Republicans. But the real losers here in this, 95%, Jason, of the population growth in Texas over the last decade was driven by minorities. Uh, we have two new congressional uh, seats that have been drawn in the state, uh, and minorities are not being given a chance, an expanded chance, to choose candidates of their choice, which is what the Voting Rights Act is supposed to be, at least in part, allowed them to do. Uh, and so this is going to be challenged in court. As you know, there, there have already been uh, court challenges filed on this uh, by Paul Depp, uh, and we may see some more on that. Uh, the fact is that the court challenges can be based on whether this is racially discriminatory, but the Supreme Court in the last 10 years had said uh, that you can no longer challenge the maps based on whether they're too partisan, and that changed a lot of the arguments about this even in the legislative process. And Scott, we've been hearing a lot about gerrymandering going into this. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing some headlines that Texas has become redder. Uh, can yep. you talk a little bit about this? Because you, you did mention that this benefits uh, Republican <clears throat> and Democrat incumbents alike, mm -hmm. but what is the final takeaway as far as the partisan uh, part of it goes. You know, the Republicans in this state are no longer able to greatly expand their numbers of uh, representatives in Washington and in Austin based on the fact that this is a changing state. As much as California is a very Democratic state and you had uh, Biden win there by, I think, uh, something like 26 points uh, in the last election in 2020, uh, President Trump only won Texas by six. And if you look at the changing demographics and people will ro some people will roll their eyes and say, oh, I've heard this forever that Democrats uh, are going to win seats in Texas because of changing demographics. The truth is that in the last few cycles that has started to happen. Republicans have had to fight back a lot harder, spending tens of millions of dollars in 2020 uh, to be able to keep the seats that they had. So in this redistricting map, what they're trying to do is give themselves more affordable campaigns, if you will. They won't have to spend as much to hold this territory after these lines have been redrawn. So Scott, you mentioned that uh, minority voters lost out in, in the redrawing of these maps here. Uh, how about uh, Democrats in the end? Could things have gone much worse for them than they turned out. I think they could have. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the realities in a bigger uh, sense, a larger sense about everything that unfolded this year, there were so many bitter partisan fights. Uh, and the fact is that the the Republican majority in Austin uh, was pushing forward with uh, an incumbent protection program for themselves in primaries, if you look at the kind of legislation that was passed, uh, the heartbeat bill that you mentioned, uh, constitutional carry, and some of the other things that really appeal to the right-wing conservative base. Republicans only seem to be worried about their primaries, but on a statewide level, I would say that Democrats may end up being more competitive uh, in this next election in 2022. You can't gerrymander or uh, redraw Texas, mm -hmm. and the numbers continue to move just numerically. This is where it's going in the direction of the Democrats. But of course, as we sit here today and talk, Jason, Democrats still don't have a candidate for governor. So we'll uh, just watch that space. Yeah, we're still waiting to see what, when and if that announcement is going to be coming. We, we expect it right. here in the next couple of months. Uh, last question for you today, Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, what's 
next here as far as another session in Austin. We've heard of a lot of fatigue from lawmakers who've been through three of these now following the regular session. You mentioned that Governor Abbott has gotten a lot of the stuff that he wanted uh, mm -hmm. to, to please his base here. Now, though, one of the people who is going to primary him, uh, Don Huffines, calling for another special session. Do you think that's likely to happen? If it happens, it would be a forced error. We talk about unforced errors in politics, but this would be a forced error. I mean, if you look and I talk to a lot of the folks who, and this is how I kind of take the temperature of the Republican base, Jason, turn on conservative talk radio. I talk to some of the uh, talk radio hosts around the state and you check in with their listeners. There's still not, and it's just anecdotal, and there's some polling on this as well, but uh, people still don't know who Governor Abbott's challengers are. Don Huffines, Alan West, we know who they are because this is what we do for a living, right? But out there in the in the greater world, even among uh, the GOP base, they still haven't been able to catch fire, right? And so there are a lot of Republicans who are upset with Abbott over some of the things he's doing, uh, but people aren't clamoring for a Don Huffines or an Alan West just yet. Uh, and so every time the governor does something that really angers a lot of people, be it on the right or on the left it looks like an unforced error the truth is it's a forced error uh, because Abbott is a scared he's scared of his own shadow and he's scared of these uh, folks who are challenging from the right but as we mentioned the Democrats aren't coming at him from the left or even the middle at this point so why would he worry about anything else politically and again we'll see if that changes here in the next little bit and we'll probably be, be calling you once again uh, Scott Braddock uh, editor of the quorum report we always feel smarter about these things when we talk to you really appreciate it man it's my pleasure thank you Jason